Welcome to month four of Maddie's Baking Book Club. This month we read the book Fable by Adrienne Young. It is a YA kind of adventure, sort of fantasy, uh, very seafaring, pirate-esque <laughs> adventure book about this girl, Fable. And it was a bit of a challenge to create a macaron inspired by this book um, because there's not a lot of reference to food and even more than that, the main character and a lot of the other side characters are constantly like legitimately starving. So there just is not a lot of food mentioned. So you had to go a little bit outside of the box to create a book inspired bake here. So for me, for my macaron, I started off with a pretty light brown um, macaron shell base. I'm just going to make some circle macaron shells here again. This is the French method. If you don't know a lot about the French method for making macarons, make sure to check out some of my other videos videos, especially my start to finish tutorials. So I whipped up that meringue to a really nice stiff peak. I'm adding in my dry ingredients. I'm going to fold this and uh, macronage until I get to that ribbon stage. Everything is proceeding like normal. Now, why am I going with this color? This color choice, I used both a bit of a powdered brown food colorant and I'm using some gel brown food colorant as well. I want it to be like a relatively rich brown but not too intensely brown i want it to be a little bit of like an orangey brown so i added a bit of uh the like pumpkin uh into the the meringue as it was whipping as well um because I want this to end up giving you kind of bronze, copper vibes, and I'm going to use a an edible luster dust later on because one of the things that was constantly a focus in the book was money how much money people had, the lack of money. There was just so much talk about everyone's like financial situation. It was a huge motivation for the main character to make certain choices. And um, the money that was talked about in this book, um, they just kept calling it coppers. And so I thought I would create a macaron that was inspired by currency, inspired by these coppers. And we didn't get a really in-depth description of exactly what they looked like. So I decided to just make my own currency and kind of loosely base it on what I thought um, kind of the vibe would be. So I'm starting off with this kind of brown, a little bit lightly, like on the orange sliding scale of a brown. Um, and again, just like very normal macaron shells. These are going to be piped and baked just like normal because all of the decorations is coming in later both from as I mentioned a uh, luster dust I'm going to use a brown luster dust and I'm going to use some white chocolate and I have um, an initial like a wax seal stamp thing and I'm going to use that to kind of give like a little bit of a old timey rustic maybe like a stamped coin sort of vibe to these macaron shells so for now they're going to look very very basic and normal but later on is when all of the really cool book inspired design elements are going to come into play again just like normal i'm piping these onto a seal pat you can use a teflon baking sheet or if you want to use parchment paper or whatever else that's completely fine regular circles here i do have a template you can buy a lot of macaron baking mats that already have templates in there so you don't even have to worry about that um but if you also just want to eyeball it if you don't make a lot of macarons that is fine you just want to make sure that you're trying to get them as similar in size as you can so that you can adequately match them up later on after i pipe this whole tray i'll give it a little bit of a tap then let it rest on my counter I personally like to rest my macarons for like 15 to 20, maybe 25 minutes before I get the first trays in the oven. If I'm making a small batch like this, which is just two trays, for the most even bake, I often will just bake one tray at a time, 
but you can absolutely test out baking two trays at a time even in your home kitchen oven make sure to check out my tutorial on how to do that if you are curious i am baking my macarons whether it's one tray or two at 300 degrees fahrenheit for about 17 minutes that might be longer or shorter for you the temperature might be a little bit higher or a little bit lower that all depends on your unique oven and situation after the macarons are completely baked and cooled i'm going to get into that decoration so first i have some white chocolate here i am not worrying about tempering this or anything i literally just melted it obviously tempering this will give you a stronger end result you can also use candy melts if you want to or if that's all you have on hand I have my melted chocolate. It's not super, super hot, but it is still obviously liquid. Then I piped a little bit. I used a piping bag here on top of my macaron shells. And then I just set the wax seal stamp that I have right on top and left it for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so before I picked it up. Now, the other important thing to note here is I did have this wax seal stamp in my freezer. If you are a person who has like a freezer spray, those kinds of things are used a lot in pastry kitchens, especially for things like chocolate show pieces or things like that. Um, you can use that to help you out. Otherwise, it might take a while if you only have one wax seal stamp. I did about three at a time before the heat, both from my kitchen and from touching the chocolate, warmed up the metal part of my stamp enough that I wanted to get it back into my freezer so i stamped all of my macarons i already love this look but as i mentioned these are inspired by the currency that they kept calling i think it was coppers in the book so i got a bronze luster dust and then i am just going to literally dry brush this on so i have that luster dust and i have a nice pretty large fluffy uh paint brush here and I'm just going to grab my macaron shell and paint dust the powder all over the top. And that is all. I'm not using any liquid here. I am just like patting it on, brushing it all over. And even though in the beginning I have like a lot on my brush and there's a lot on there, I'm doing a really, really, really thin layer. And so as far as eating this, it's not something that you are going to taste. Um, and while yes, it might come off a little bit on your fingertips when you pick it up or a little bit around your mouth when you bite into it, it's not a crazy amount of luster dust. It's not like you're painting this with food coloring or something. So don't worry that this is going to, you know, cause anybody who's eating it to feel weird or uncomfortable. Like they're just like eating a huge mouthful of luster dust. It's, it's fine. This doesn't need any time to dry or anything, but just to kind of plan out all of this i did give it a little bit of time just to make sure that all of the powder had i don't know settled <laughs> before i went in and piped my filling speaking of the filling again in this book there was not a lot of mention of food but there was a lot of mention of tea so i decided to make a tea inspired ganache and i am using a black tea so i have a black tea here and i am just warming up some cream so I can infuse the flavor into um, the cream. I also am going with a pastry cream style ganache. So I have a little bit of other cream with some cornstarch. I've got a little bit of sugar. I'm using both white and brown sugar and then a little bit of lavender extract going in there. And at the very end, I'm also going to add in some bergamot juice. I am using a mixture of white and Dulce chocolate because I just felt like in this world, in this situation, um, nothing is like overly sweet or decadent or anything. I know I'm making these like very fancy looking macaron shells, but I wanted it to have kind of a more of like an 
earthy, rustic feeling to it, which is why I added in the brown sugar for that kind of molasses, earthy flavor, and why I added in the dulce to give, again, kind of a like smoother uh, finish in the flavor there. The reason for the lavender and for the bergamot is because when the main character, Fable, was given an opportunity to drink some tea maybe have a moment to sit when she wasn't like panicking for her life um she often mentioned notes of bergamot and lavender in the teas she was drinking i don't know exactly what else or what else was going on in this tea but i really loved that and it felt like this one little moment in the book when our main character could just like take a deep breath and so I really wanted to encompass that feeling of like okay I get to like sit here and just like drink this really nice cup of tea um and not worry about things like you know the dangers of being aboard a ship or you know all of this odd job she's had to do just to fight for survival or this whole like family drama her dad is crazy um struggling for money like uh, so many different things are going on for this girl and she when she had these moments and we finally would hear about what she was eating or drinking it was like oh finally i'm so relieved for you (laughs) so i really wanted to get that into my macarons because this is a pastry cream style ganache i am cooking it like a pastry cream. I did have the sugar cream mixture in my saucepan first, tempered that into my cornstarch cream mixture, and then everything is back into the pan where I'm going to whisk it constantly on a pretty low heat. Even if it seems like nothing is happening right away, please do not crank up the heat on this. Just let it go low and slow. Stand there don't do anything else. Don't multitask. Do not walk away from this. Just let it be. Then once it thickens up and it starts to look like, you guessed it, a pastry cream, that is when I'm going to pull it off the heat, pour it over my chocolates. I really like to warm up my chocolates just a little bit. I'm talking like 30 seconds in your microwave. Doesn't have to be crazy. You can completely melt them if you want, but that is not necessary. Having them a little bit warm though, or a little bit melted does help the incorporation of the cream mixture into the chocolates without too much of a drastic difference in temperature. All right, now that I've got that really thick cream, I'm going to pour it over my chocolates. Wait a sec, let everything heat through. Then I'm going to give it a nice stir and then set it aside. Do not look at it. Do not touch it for like 15 to 20 minutes. You want it to cool down until it's warm, but not hot. And at that point, you can get in there with your immersion blender and then add in your room temperature unsalted butter. And finally, at the very 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 end to keep a like bright fresh note in there i'm going to add in a little bit of that bergamot juice so the reason this is looking so dark deep rich brown right now is a combination of the dulce chocolate that i used and the brown sugar in the pastry cream style mixture so if you go with all white chocolate if you make this recipe and if you go with all regular sugar um 
obviously this is going to change color because i wanted this to be like a coppery coin rustic kind of macaron shell i was quite pleased with the ganache being kind of a light brown um but if you wanted this to be a different color obviously you can add in a bit of food coloring or again you can make that decision when you choose the chocolate that you're going to be adding in For my ganaches, I really like to just pour them out into a plastic wrap lined sheet pan. This creates a really, really thin layer that increases the surface area and that allows the ganache to cool down really quickly. If you transfer this to another bowl, that is absolutely fine, but just know the deeper the layer of ganache, the longer it is going to take to cool enough for you to be able to pipe your macaron shells. Once it is completely cool, then you can get in there, pipe your macaron shells before getting this into your refrigerator or freezer so they can completely mature before you bite into these macaron shells. Um, I find that ganache filled macarons generally mature a bit more quickly than a buttercream filled macaron. I was a little bit apprehensive what the chocolate kind of wax seal looking bit on the top would do as far as biting into these or them maturing, but I actually was not a problem at all. So if that was a concern, do not even worry about it. How amazing are these? I'm sorry, but these are just like some of the coolest macarons I've ever made. I I'm absolutely going to make these again in the future and I really hope you give both the flavor and the style a try. Now I'm going to talk with my friend Marie about the book Fable by Adrienne Young. If you want to listen to our book discussion, stay tuned. If that is not for you, thank you for watching. Up until this point, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos and tutorials. And if you want to join my book club, there is more information down below and on my Instagram as well. All right, on to the book discussion. Hi, Marie. Thank you for being Hi. here. Do you want to tell our listeners here who you are, where you are from, why you are here, how do you know me, all of that? <laughs> so, my name is Marie. I'm from France. And you and I met in Korea. Mm -hmm even though by random life choices, you actually lived here before. <laughs> I did, I did. Um, <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. And we met in Korea. And I am here today because you kindly invited me to join your book club. So we are going Thank to talk you. about Fable. Mm -hmm. And before we get into Fable for our yeah. book discussion, now, Marie, you are a reader. What, what do you generally yeah. read? How much do you read? Well, I am in a bit of a reading slump these days, but <laughs> I usually read a lot of fantasy, mm -hmm. as you know. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of contemporary work as well. Mm -hmm. I really love stories about like family secrets and okay. things like that. <laughs> I am not much of a romance reader, which you know. I do, because I've given you many romance novels. <laughs> Which is the only time I mostly read them. <laughs> but you put up with it very nicely, so I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> I've read almost. I've read almost all of them. I think. Um, and um, yeah, I read quite a lot. That is true. You read quite a lot, and <laughs> you like to read. You said fantasy, but you read a lot of like young adults teen fantasy i know you recommended a lot to me um so that was as i was searching for books that we could read together we were both like we've both discovered a mutual love for pirates um 
<laughs> I don't know, another random thing we have in common. And um, so when I saw this and I saw like, oh my gosh, there's fantasy adventure, like teen girl, like situation, like young adult novel. And it's like pirate nautical themed. I was like, it's... Yeah. It's the book for us. <laughs> it is. I, I didn't really do a lot more research. Like, I didn't know this author. I didn't know anything else about this book. That those were, like, the key points. And it was like, yep, send it to Marie. That's that's the one. Yeah. And I didn't even write the summary when you sent it to me. I was like, it's a pirate story. I'm just going to read I'll it. Read it. <laughs> I'm just going to go into it and we'll see, like, how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a brief kind of what, what is this book actually about? What's going on? So this book is about this girl that's named Fable, mm -hmm. which I really like as a name. I think yeah. it's really cool. That yeah. That's First time name. I had heard that as well. I, yeah. I liked that. Yeah. And so we find her, she's, when it starts, she's on an island, mm -hmm. clearly like struggling to survive. And her purpose is to get out, get off the island and find her father, which we know really early. I think that her dad is like this big pirate. Yeah, like chapter one. This is like, we haven't even yeah. gotten into this spoiler like alerts. We will, She's but like, I'm like gonna find him <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to get what I deserve. You don't really know first, like what she me means by that. Yeah. So yeah, so you follow her whole journey as mm -hmm. she gets off this island eventually mm -hmm. and try and find her dad and what happens mm -hmm. if she does or when she does and you just follow that and the um, people she meets along the way mm -hmm. exactly so from this point on many spoilers so yeah if you haven't read the book yet or don't want to have any spoilers please stop listening yeah. <laughs> um so marie you're mentioning in the beginning of the book we kind of start off with like some key details about her life and yeah. you know it goes from there what did you think about the beginning of the book really slow okay um, because that I, that's why i'm mentioning this because i so i i binge read this book on an airplane i like yeah. i read the whole thing like straight through from london to minneapolis mm -hmm. and the first eight chapters i yeah. was sitting there like i've made a terrible mistake <laughs> And every time I turn the page, I'm flipping the chapters and I'm like, oh, what have I just forced Marie to read? Like, what have I done? This is not good. And that, like, seriously, it was like chapter nine. Like, I took a note about it in my phone. I was like, oh, no, I do like, like, this is a nice start. Like, okay, I'm, I'm in now. But the beginning, if I hadn't been on a plane, like physically trapped, mm -hmm. I, I think I would have either like put it down or like yeah. delayed reading it. I don't know. What what were your thoughts? I I'd say same like the first fifty pages, yeah. I was like, this is going to be really long. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not a long book. <laughs> it's just, and it's not you're right. It's really not that long. Like you can read it really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just reading the beginning and I was like, oh my God, and it felt like I can't stop because I made you. <laughs> I had this like, thing with you today and I started reading it last week. So it's not really old. I was like, I don't have a lot of time and I obviously have to read it until mm -hmm. the end. And I was like, this is going to take forever. It's yeah. just going to be yeah. painful. Yeah. So the first 50 pages felt really messy yep. and really like slow. And mm -hmm. I was like, what is she getting at? Like, yep. what's the, yep. what's going to happen? Then it picked up a little bit for me, like when she gets off the island. Yep, like, okay, yep. This is getting more no, Here we go, here we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So when she, like, this point, this point on, started getting a bit better, but mm -hmm. I'd say at, like, the middle of it, I started getting into it, really. The second half was way better for me. Definitely. I completely agree. I I am going to read the next book. I ordered it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious after reading that, because by the end of the book, I liked it enough to be like, yeah, I'm going to read the next one. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious once I read that, if it's like, oh, no, you could have, this could have been one book. <laughs> I, I don't, especially because that beginning part, like you said, when she was still on this island, 
yes, it was good background information, but it felt like we at the same time had too much information and not enough information. And it was just like, why are you repeating these details? And then why do I not know anything about all of these other things? And it just felt, yeah, it felt messy in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It felt disconnected. Of like yep. You have this little bit of information and yep. then you don't talk about it. Yep. And then it comes back, I don't know, the point, and you're like, right, but just, yeah, it felt just really disconnected between, like, things happening, and yeah. like, it's not as, like, like, doesn't flow really well. Yeah. If that makes sense. Definitely, definitely. Sometimes I felt like this information should not be here, or why are we only hearing about this now? <laughs> it would have made more sense, like, yeah. the whole gem thing. For example, yep. Like she sees a gem and she's like, "This is not real." All and right. you're like, "What?" <laughs> great, like great eye. And like, oh, it's because my mother had this kind of power thingy. And you're like, I like, I wouldn't believe that. Okay, yeah. Then talk about it more. But then, then you just talking about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And it reappears at the end ish where people are like, "Oh, is that why it happened?" Because your mother did that, and you're like, okay, but you talked about it, and then you didn't talk about it, and then yeah. it's back on the thingy. Like, I I completely agree with that, and I feel like in some ways, some of those little bits of information led to especially once you hit the halfway point and you had enough information and you're invested enough that you're like, yep, I'm I'm in now. Um, and in some ways, only getting a little bit at a time, mm. there were constantly things that you're like, I do want to know more. Like, I want to keep reading. Yeah. I want to solve this problem. I want to find the answer. And in some mm. ways, that makes a really good book because, like, y- you need to keep reading to find out. And it's mm. not like, I know we've talked about this even today, like, it's not overly cliched. Like, um, it's as I was reading, there were some parts that, you know, you could guess where things were headed, but there were other parts where I was like, I genuinely don't know where you're going with this. And, you know, it wasn't, I think, perfectly woven together. Um, Mm -hmm. But I did like that. I, it was a bit unpredictable in that way that I was like, you know, this could be going one of 10 different directions right now. And I'm, I'm not sure which, (laughs) No, it did give me, I don't know if you, I can't remember if you read it. I know you watch the show because we talk about it a lot. <laughs> but it gave me Six of Crows vibes ish. I, what was that? Tell me a little bit. Because, because Six of Crows is like, like the ultimate crew for me. <laughs> so it was like, you're clearly not on the right side of the law, but you're not Taz Breaker yep. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did give me a tiny bit a of this, bit. like, feeling of like this group of people that's kind of yes I I did get a little bit of that vibe I didn't read six of crows I read the shadow and bone you gave me those books when I was in France what is that trilogy called is it just called shadow and oh okay okay. that's isn't that the the, the two is called shadow no the trilogy is the Grisha oh yeah that's right the whole thing is called the Grisha universe like world yeah yeah okay Okay. the Grisha verse Mm -hmm. Um, Shadow and Bone is just called Shadow and Bone, I think. Okay. <laughs> and then you have Six of Crows. That used to be a duology, but I think a third one is going to come out. Oh, I should, I should get that on my list. I know you love it so much. <laughs> yes, um, I was wondering if this had reminded you of any other books, because I also had a little bit of that vibe from hmm. the Netflix version of Shadow and yeah. Bone, because you get the Six of Crows characters in there. So I definitely had that comparison. The other one, and I can't remember the exact book. Um, you might remember better than me, but something I read in like elementary school, early middle mm-hmm. school. Is it her name Tamara Pierce? The one that wrote like one billion books. She had this one called like Alana or something. And there was a girl who was like pretending to be a guy, something about a ship. I don't know. I have this like vague memory and just the whole like, yeah, nautical girl, piratey vibe reminded me. Like I had these vague memories of that. Yeah. No. I had a vague memory of a book that was called, 
well, in French, it was called Memories of a Parrot, mm. which I read like 20 plus years ago. <laughs> so I'm not. <laughs> Not Something really in our childhood. Anything about it. <laughs> um, okay, so another question. Did you have any favorite characters or favorite scenes in the book? I think I liked the scene that's in the middle. I think she's on uh-huh. a ship. Uh-huh. And she's clearly being tested <laughs> by the people there. Uh-huh. And they're kind of like degrading. And they're like, are oh, you only this? Or you're only in it for like the copper or whatever. Yeah. And he, like, I can't remember his name. But he throws one in the water and she's yes. like, you know what, I'm just actually going to go and get it. Yeah, yeah. And she does it and she gets it and she comes back. And then, like... And she, like, gets West injured. Comes in and yeah. everyone's like, let's just not say <laughs> what happened. <laughs> and I felt like it was... Because, as she says, she had to earn the respect. Mm-hmm. And I think at that moment they were like, oh, right, maybe she's not just the poor thing that paid her way on the ship. Yeah. I, I did, this, this I did like that. that the most. Yeah. I really liked, I think from that point on, there were a lot of scenes like that, that mm-hmm. I think the one thing that this book did a good job of was showing this girl, Fable, who is like both very naive and in some ways innocent and like, like very much like a girl. And then in other ways, like actually quite strong and actually quite independent and actually mm-hmm. quite resilient. And I think scenes like that were really a good mix of like, the like, okay, she's a scared girl who's like just trying to survive. And then also like kind of is like has a reckless abandon for like, yeah, sure. Let me just dive into this water and go catch this one copper. Like yeah. all of these. Almost died. This, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it really showed like all these sides of her personality kind of like, just struggling to survive and like I don't know get through life I appreciated that about her definitely did you have a favorite character I mean I think I I genuinely liked Fable by the end I think in the beginning I was kind of like like we've mentioned the beginning was a bit slow and it was kind of hard to love her right away because it was just like I don't I don't feel like I know enough about you, but by the end, I feel like you really got a sense of this this girl who was like just trying to get by. Um, yeah. And I do kind of like, even though, as you mentioned, there's like the whole gem thing and there's kind of like, wait, do you have this like magical power? And like, are you like whatever? She clearly works very hard. Like she's clearly actually skilled and talented at things because of her hard work and effort. Um, and I do kind of like that in a lot of young adult fantasy novels, I feel like the main character has some like miraculous power. I mean, obviously I'm a diehard like Harry Potter fan and, you know, I could go on and on, but it's like, oh my God, you're the chosen one. You're the one. And I, I love those books, but it's also like, but all these other characters in those books worked so hard and they like aren't in the spotlight. I feel like she genuinely was like, main character energy (laughs) like she she was she put herself there she put in the work so I don't know I I like that about her I am going to read the next book in the series because I want to know what's up how things ended um what about you did it intrigue you enough to keep reading I am intrigued I was (laughs) No, um, yes, at the end of the book, I was like, all right, clearly there's, it's my fault, I thought it was a standalone. Oh, no! When it ended, I was like, wait a second. (laughs) I should have warned you better. (laughs) And then I realized, like, oh, no, it's a first, it's a first book. So I did put the second one um, in my to-read list. Okay, okay. Which is really long, so I don't know what is going to happen. Someday. Also, Someday. I did read the summary for the second one, so uh-huh. I'm like, this is the direction this is going to take. So I'm a bit curious, but also not like Desperate. insanely <laughs> curious that I just read it already. Yep. Yep. It usually happens, as you know, I tend to go a little bit. True, true. So, thinking about the book overall, um, what would you rate it, and on what scale? 
I think I gave it, so I use Goodreads, mm -hmm. so I think I gave it on Goodreads three stars mm -hmm. out of five, because it was not perfect, mm -hmm. obviously, but nothing mm -hmm. is. Um, like, it was good enough that mm -hmm. I wanted to keep reading it, mm -hmm. which is basically my level of, or I feel like a chore, <laughs> yep. in which yep. it's one or two stars, or did yep. I actually want to read it, even if it wasn't, like, the best Yep. thing I've ever read did I like feel like oh yeah I really want to know what happens next but I give mm -hmm. it I give it a three star yeah I on Goodreads I would do the same Goodreads the star system gives me a lot of anxiety because yeah. it's like one is like you despised it two yeah. is like it was fine you liked it. Yeah. three is like you liked it Four yeah. is loved it. Five is like incredible. But depending on like my mood, when I read it, what else I've read recently, like that could change between like like it to love it to like, I don't yeah. know. I feel like there's a lot of wiggle room. So I agree. I think for me on Goodreads scale, it's a three stars out of five. Mm -hmm. I think more broadly, I would give this like a solid like B, 80% four stars not on a goodread scale mm -hmm. um the beginning like two stars but the rest of the book yeah. three or four i would say yeah. turned it around um besides the beginning is there anything else you would have done differently or changed if you were the, an author or editor in this book i feel like we don't have enough information about the other characters yep yeah. Like properly, because even West, who's obviously like the male main mm -hmm. character, mm -hmm. I would say, you don't have that much information on him. Yeah. Or his sister. Yep. And the other crew member, you basically just know their names, if you think about Yeah. It. And you learn like little so bits. Like it's but it's, yeah. Missing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like a little bit more information on them to make you like them more. Because yep. now you're just like, ah, they're <laughs> here. Yep. yep. Whatever. Definitely. I, I completely nice. agree. And I think, again, going back to my thought earlier about like, there are some things that are like, oh, but that does add an element of mystery or something. It's mm -hmm. like, in part, knowing only a little bit was like intriguing, like, oh, I have all these questions I want answered. But then, yeah, the book ends and you're like, wait, a lot of those questions were not answered. Like, I don't know any more about those people. So, yeah, but it was, it was okay. I would, I would yeah. continue reading. All right. Well, Marie, thank you for having a discussion with me today. I appreciate you being you. here. All right. Thank you. See you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Much for staying all the way till the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, both my fable inspired macaron, the little tea ganache and kind of copper inspired design. Um, and also my discussion with Murray. It was so nice having her on and chatting with her here. If you haven't already, make sure to check out all of the posts from Maddie's Baking Book Club over on Instagram. You can follow and search the hashtag Maddie's Baking Book Club, all one word, uh, to find what everybody else has been posting today. And if you want to participate next time, or if you want to read any of the books you've already read, make sure to check out any of the information down below. Everything is posted there and all of the information about what is coming next, what other books we'll be reading and what months they are for is listed as well. If you haven't participated before on Maddie's Baking Book Club, every month, the last Sunday of the month, I post my tutorials and book discussion videos here on YouTube as well as over on Instagram. You can follow along and participate by posting yourself using the hashtag Maddie's Baking Book Club. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a wonderful day. Bye!